Sup my dudes, Valk here. Today I want to talk to you about Blade, my plan build for Blade, and a couple concerns I have basically around his kit. He looks really, really cool, and I think he's going to be really dope, but I do want to talk about some things and how I plan on building him, basically covering what I think might be an issue, potentially. Now, I don't recommend doing what I do, which is already have my relics ready, I have everything ready for him, because he has a set that's dropping with him whenever he comes out. It's a set that increases match HP and increases crit rate every time they get hit. So it's really, 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 really good for Blade. That's the set you're going to want. I don't recommend already preparing relics for him. But because I leveled up so many characters, I don't really farm a lot of relics. I don't have a lot of opportunities to farm relics. So I take what I can get. And these allowed me to actually farm two sets at once. Now, if I do farm the new relics and I get the speed that I want, because I do want some of the speed set, um, on some characters. So if I do farm the new relics and in order to get the speed set and I happen to get some good pieces for Blade, then I will be swapping and upgrading this build, but I do want to go over the build I have ready for Blade as well as some concerns I have for his kit. Now, if you're free to play, I highly recommend skipping Blade. Here's why. If you, he is very reliant on future character releases to actually be able to function very well, because right now there's not a lot of synergies within his team and I'm going to talk about it in a second. But basically, if you build him to try to capitalize the most on his damage, which he scales primarily off max HP, you can see on everything but his normal, he has very high max HP multipliers, even at level 7, even on his uh, talent, it's very, very high max HP, you're going to want a lot of HP on him, he's able to hit very, very hard because of it. But, because the way his talent works, when Blade sustains damage or consumes his HP, he gains one stack of charge. Stacking up to five times a max of one charge stack can be gained every time he is attacked. So, you want teammates to either be able to direct aggro or be able to consume his HP. That way, he is able to build up these stacks very quickly and then do a follow-up attack that does up to 90% of his max HP, plus 36% of his attack at level 7. At the same time, it heals him for 25% of his max HP. After the follow-up attack, all charges are consumed. This is a very hard-hitting attack. The more you can proc it, the more value you're going to get out of Blade, and he's going to be very, very good. So, that in lies the issue. Right now, you do not have the tools to properly build around Blade to be able to absolutely abuse this talent. This is a very, very incredibly strong talent. You don't have the tools yet available to you, and whenever you are building Blade, or whenever you do get Blade, you are locking yourself into this team that builds completely around him, and he's going to be very centered as far as the team goes, because you're kind of building around him to be able to proc this talent as much as possible. And that also locks you into future pools that if you do not want future characters that enable this playstyle even more, then I highly recommend that you skip him. Now, that being said, if you really like Blade, he's going to be really, really strong, even with without this talent even without this going he's still gonna be very good it's still gonna proc every now and then but not nearly as often as he would in his actual team where he's synergizing so he's still gonna be able to proc it he's still gonna be a nice character to have because he he doesn't consume a lot of skill points because he's able to enhance his basics and go ahead and pump out basics like this and the basics this enhanced basic just increases his damage dealt by 30 percent at level 7 which is pretty good and consumes 30% of his HP to start, and this lasts for three turns. It does not end a turn, so he's able to use it and then immediately normal right after. But because you're going to build him to a lot of HP, at least for me personally, he's not going to be doing a ton of damage on his basics, which is nice. However, his ultimate's going to be a lot where the damage is at. Sets Blade's current HP to 50% of his max HP and deals a single enemy deals to a single enemy wind damage equal to some 34% of his attack, 85% of his max HP, and 85% of the total HP he has lost in the current battle. Once again, he functions around HP. Uh, at the same time, deals wind damage to ad adjacent targets equal to some of 14% of his attack, 34% of his max HP, and 34% of the total HP he's lost in current battle. The total HP he's lost in current battles capped at 90% of his max HP. This value will be reset and reaccumulated after the ultimate has been used. So, it's a nuke. It's a nuclear bomb, a big AoE nuke. It's going to be really nice because you can just activate it on his ultimate. It's going to make him very, very strong. And like I said, he's going to be really good even before you can actually utilize a talent to its maximum capabilities. So he's going to be very good in that regard. So in the move of ultimate disrespect, I have blade stuff sitting on Don Hang ready for blade. 
So I'm going to go ahead and showcase what I plan on running on him. I'm just going to run the Heart of Light Cone. Is it the absolute best one? I'm iffy on it. But it gives him a bunch of attack that he desperately needs to make his normals do virtually anything. It gives him 32% of attack whenever he attacks. It can stack up to four times. And anytime he inflicts weakness break on an enemy, he's going to increase his damage by 12%. This is really nice. This is only SI1. So as I get more copies, it's going to go up. Really, really good in my opinion. I think it's going to be solid for him. I think it's a good option and it's something everybody has access to. So I think it's something to look at. A Secret of Battle is also a really good option on him because it's just flat out 20% damage dealt increase. The wear also deals an extra 20% of damage to enemies whose HP uh, is currently equal to or higher than his and he's always sucking his own HP. So this is a really good one. You can get up to 80% extra damage dealt off of this. A Secret of Battle is very, very, very strong. And that's really about it for his light cones. It's either, you know, Clarence is really strong too. If you have it, just use it. But I mean, I don't think I need to tell you guys a five star light cone that is, you know, out of this, or that's summonable. Summonable five star light cone is very good. I don't think I need to tell you guys that. But as far as the free to play options go, if you have been to pull the secret vow just on summoning for a banner, it's a really good option. On the fall of an Aeon is also a good option. There's not really anything else that's really, really good for him, in my opinion. And then as far as the build itself, Fleet of the Ageless to give him some more max HP. Uh, there is a new planner set coming also that also functions really well with him. Once again, I, like I said, the relics, I wouldn't recommend farming relics from yet because you're going to want basically all new stuff. The new planner set as well as the new relic set are both going to be very good on him. But this is what, I, what my setup is because I just happen to get them because I figure I can knock out two birds, one stone, get a decent wind set going as well as farm some ice for Yang King, um, because I do want to build him eventually anyways. So this is what I plan on running on him. This is a good alternative if you want to farm relics now, but like I said, ideally you do wait until you can get the new relic set as well as the new planner set. They're both going to be very, very good for him. But that's basically it for Blade right now. I think Blade is very, very strong as a character. I think it's going to be really good. Oh yeah, I got to show you the main stats. I think it's going to be really, really good. You can see I got crit damage here. I got HP percent, and then I got wind damage boost, and then more HP percent. Ideally, I want speed here rather than HP percent. I'd rather have speed, but this HP percent one is so good that I was just like, I'm just going to run it anyways because it's got attack, critical damage, although it hit flat defense. You guys know how it goes. Uh, but <laughs> I think Blade's going to be very, very good. I'm really excited for him. I think he's going to be super strong. I just think he's a character that you summon for, though, if you plan on summoning for future units that are going to give him a better team, better team options. And he's just kind of like an investment character right now. Like, you invest for right now so you can have a stronger team later, essentially, is the type of character he is. But Blade's animations are so cool. He's such a cool character and all. And I can't wait for the rest of the story to get the conclusions of what's happening with Blade. But I'm really excited for Blade all in all. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.